What's up all you amazing bartenders? Marky Mark here. I've been getting some questions online about what I am, what I'm about, what this channel is supposed to be doing, where it's going. So I'm just going to go ahead and break down what this channel is all about. Bar simplified. BS means no BS. So I'm just going to give it to you straight, tell you how it is. And if there's a way, an easier way of doing things, I want to show you how to do something so we can all just give great customer service. At the end of the day, my goal is to hope that one out of a thousand like what I'm doing, see how I'm doing it, and then pass it on to their guests. I see all these great videos out there of people making fun of our guests that come in and see us all the time and don't know what's on the menu or, or have been there many times and eats the same thing every time but has to like figure it out before they get to it getting frustrated or going, can I get a Tito's and Tito's or a vodka and Tito's? You know, these little things happen. I mean, and some people get very upset about it and it changes their mood or they're not happy about how it went or whatever like that. But at the end of the day, there are guests. If they're not there, then we don't have guests. And I know you're saying, oh, I'm always gonna have guests. I'm always gonna have guests. People like to come into a place where there's people. And if you keep pushing people away, eventually, you're not going to have any people. So you have that person that comes in that's a little bit of trouble and, and doesn't take really good care of you, but he's there or she's there three or four times a week, you know, deal with it. Treat them nice. I mean, that's what we're in the business for. We're in the business to make someone's day. Great customer service. I mean, I just feel that's getting lost. And these videos come out and they're really funny and the guy's trying to figure something out or he's like surprised me and he's like wow you're adopted or you know hey you know party I've been waiting 30 minutes for my table and you know people these things happen and people see them and they're gonna carry these over to their their bars and they're gonna make things happen and and, and hurt people's feelings and, and everything I mean I understand it it's funny and it's great and I really do like it it does happen but at the end of the day we want to make everybody that's coming through that door extremely happy because if we make them happy they're going to tell two people you know and then those two people are going to come in and see you and if they have a great time they're going to tell four people so if you keep this going and you just keep a great customer service going it's just one of those things that's just going to keep you know you're going to keep reaping the benefits of it you're just going to keep getting busier and busier and busier and busier you know and then things are going to happen you're going to do great one night and you're going to have a bad night the next night you know, it's understandable. I mean, you can't make everybody happy. I totally understand that. But at the end of the day, if you have regulars that are coming in that are a pain, that are giving you a hassle, don't always take care of you the right way or the way you think you should be taken care of for what you're doing for them, I mean, suck it up. I mean, do it. Just take care of them. And they're there all the time. You know, I know someone coming in, flashing money, saying they're doing this and that, and you know, you jump right on it. But at the end of the day, are they gonna be there tomorrow? You have no clue. Are they gonna be here next week? You have no clue. But the person sitting there that's giving you a little bit of hard time, that you can give a little hard time back to, is there all the time. So you just have to make sure you know where you're going with this. And be careful what you watch online, because when you watch something online and you see these people joking around with people, in some situations, it's fine. In other situations, you're hurting their feelings or somebody around them's feelings. So you have to be kind of careful. Uh, I play with that line a little bit too much, I think. So I have to keep an eye on that because I joke around with my guests pretty good uh, and give them a hard time as they give me a hard time. But you have to be careful because everybody around you sees you and they might not know the situation that we have, like great friend, friend guest kind of thing going on. So you just gotta be careful. You have to be you. If you can be you behind the bar and not be short with people that come in all the time, you know, that's your bread and butter. Someone that comes in three, four times a week, I mean, that's money. That's somebody that's gonna, that's someone that's supporting you, spending their hard earned money that they work every day for to come in and sit down at your bar. If you just keep pushing them away, pushing them away, pushing them away, you're gonna get your wish. They're gonna be gone. And then you're not gonna have that regular. And you're gonna be like, oh, I wonder where he's at or she's at. And then you're not gonna have another one and then another one. And the next thing you know, it goes from five, $600 ring, $1,000 ring, $2,000 ring, whatever it may be, to like $100 a ring. You know, so you have to be careful. If you cross the line and you push people away or you're giving these people a hard time, 
you know, because you think they're a pain in the, pain in the butt to you, you know, you're going to get your wish eventually. They're going to leave. They're going to find somebody else that's going to take care of them a little bit better and help them out. You know, at the end of the day, we want to give that fantastic customer service. I am strong, strong, strong customer service. I'm a good bartender. I'm decently fast. I know a lot of drinks, but at the end of the day, my customer customer service skills at the end of the day my customer service skills are top-notch I'm trying to see little tales if they're looking around for something if I can guess what it is and get it to them before they ask me for it um, seeing someone come in and they're cold try to get them a towel or a blanket and, you know you have someone that's having a tough time reading the menu you try to find them glasses you know there's little things you see you know it's a puzzle every day two people sit down it's a puzzle the puzzle might be very easy. It might be one, two, three, take the order, make the drinks, give them the food, boom, they pay the check and they're gone. Very simple puzzle. You might have another puzzle that's a thousand and it's almost all one color. And you have to figure out every piece little by little. You have to pull a little bit out, a little bit out, move one in, try a spot. If it doesn't fit, go on to the next piece. You know, you have to ask those questions to try to help them along to have them to have a great time. You know, so, I mean, it's not all going to be you know, win, win, win. You're gonna have some losses, but you're gonna turn those losses around. Some of my best regulars are from incidents that had happened, you know, that were bad. I mean, I was, I was working in a restaurant and I was managing and we had a girl on the floor. It was her first day as a server. She had trained, she had grid training and everything like that. First day as a server, she was extremely nervous. Her first table came in. She went over to the table, she took the order, she went back to the bar, she ordered the wine that the lady wanted and the cocktail for the gentleman. And as she's walking over to the table, um, she went to put the wine down and she spilled the glass of wine on this lady's beautiful dress. So it was just like the girl, the girl comes running to me. She's very, very just like, holy cow, you know, I just made the biggest mistake of, of my life. I just spilled this wine on this lady's beautiful dress. You know, they're here for an anniversary, you know, and so and so forth. And then, you know, so I have to go over to the table as soon as possible because they're, they're very, uh, very irate. So I walk over to the table and you could see totally standoffish. The gentleman's arms is crossed. The lady is extremely mad. You know, it's a beautiful dress and everything like that. So I walk over to the table and I just lay it all out right on the line because I knew walking up to the table, it was going to be a difficult sell to do anything. So I just walked up to the table and I said, I'm just gonna put it out there. The rest of the night is on us. I said, I wanna get this taken care of. I'm so sorry for this. I wanna get your dress dry clean. Um, I'll get that done. If it can't get you dry clean, we'll get you another dress. And then she started going on about how expensive the dress was and, and everything like that. And, and that the server had made a big mistake because she had ordered white wine and it was red wine. And, and she kept on going down that road because she wanted to be confrontational. And I totally understood that, let them go. So they, she kind of like vented to me and I'm like, I totally understand it. Meanwhile, as I was doing this, I had the server that was struggling with this whole situation, brand new server. I had her go to the bar. I had her get a nice bottle of champagne and bring it over to the table with glasses and, and that while I'm talking to them. And I'm like, I'm so sorry, you know, for this to happen. We're going to go ahead and turn this around and I'm going to make this a great night for you. And I believe that I would make a great night for them. And it took me a little bit to get them to believe that also, but the champagne hit the table. I had the chef come over, drop off an appetizer. Uh, we started working through the thing, finding out their anniversary, you know, where the dress came from. Was it new? Was it old? We started asking questions where they're from. It's starting to lighten the mood. It took a little bit to lighten the mood, but then it started flowing just right. And we started going and I had other things come out. I didn't even give them the menu. I just started talking to them. I had the server talking to them and we just started putting pieces together of the puzzle, this 10,000 piece puzzle that was all one color. So we put it all together. By the end of the night, it did cost us a little bit of coin to get it taken care of. The dress was able to be cleaned for a decent price, not bad at all. And the guest was extremely happy. We had the server write a letter to them, you know, cause we had their name and information and email on file when they booked the reservation. So we were able to send them an email, a thank you card. I sent them another gift card. Uh, everybody I know that's gonna be watching this is gonna be going like, oh wow, you overdid it. You spent way too much money, you know, da da da. Stop. 
you want to make that guest happy. We made a big mistake. We ruined that night. I mean, that night could have been a total everything, and they'd be talking about that for the rest the rest of their lives of how they came to our restaurant and it was an anniversary and it was the worst anniversary ever. But when they left, when they left me and that server, she was her call party from that point on. That server took care of them once a week for years to come and they wrote a great review. And when they talked about our restaurant, you couldn't have put as much pride as they said when they talked to guests and they brought more people in and out, in and out. And it was just amazing. They were our best advertisement from a mistake, from a very bad mistake. I mean, something that, that could have been catastrophic. So you have to take those moments and you have to turn them around. That server struggled that day with this. We sat down, we discussed it. We showed how everything happened. I told her it's not all about money. It's about getting to know them getting to talk to them, find out what they are. We put all that stuff in their reservation notes. And every time they came in, we had it, we had it all set up for them, their, what they were drinking and everything down the line. And at that moment, it was like a, a, a decent amount of money, but over time, it was nothing. It was pennies compared to what they spent and what they had gotten people to come in and spend with us. So you have to take these situations that turn into just nightmares and you turn them around and make it a positive. So it could be easy sometimes by just getting a, a fork or a knife, um, getting extra sauce for their salad or for their entree. You know, they don't like this certain thing on it and we don't have it this moment in time, but put it on the reservation and maybe carry it the next time they come in. You can surprise them by having the item that they're looking for. I mean, all these things are there to help us. Every guest, we're professional eavesdroppers. Every guest gives you information to make their visit or every time they come into your, your establishment a better time. They give you that information. Now the question is, do you pick up on it? I know you pick up on that, hey, can I get a vodka and Tito's or Tito's and vodka? You pick up on that and you give them a hard time. Or, you know, someone that's like, oh, I don't know what I want. I don't know what I want. You know, keep going back and they're not, they're not giving you the order. And then they finally just look at you and say, oh, just make me something. And then you just sigh and you're like, ah, oh, no, that's your moment to shine. He's like, make me something. So perfect. What do you like? What's your flavors? How do you do it? You know, or if you waited on them before, you know what they're kind of looking for. So now it's your turn to create a cocktail that he's going to love. He's going to just go, man, that was amazing. Or he might go, ah, it's not, you know, it's okay. It's not great, but it gives you, you have the floor and the stage to go ahead and present a masterpiece. To go ahead and slide something in front of him. That's just going to totally blow his mind. Or he can just be, all right, I'll make a madras. And you make him a madras and you call it a different name and you put it in front of him. I mean, that's not what we do. We're here to create lifetime memories. We want everybody to leave my, I want everybody to leave my bar going, wow, that guy was great. He was on top of it. He was fast. He was efficient. And he knew exactly what I wanted right before I needed it. It was just, it was just amazing. So you have to put work into that. It doesn't come you don't walk behind the bar and then all of a sudden you have it. It's, it is a process. Sometimes you have to wait on people four, five, six times before you start gathering the information you need to go ahead and make that visit, the next visit in, and then moving forward, those visits forward to make those visits, you know, fantastic. So don't get frustrated and you're going to have tough moments and you're going to try things and you're going to pick up tabs and, and, and do things in bad situations or to try to make a situation better or even better, uh, it's going to fail. But you're also going to have wins. You're going to have a lot of wins. What worked on this table here is not going to work on this table here all the time. Now, you might get it to work on this table here, work on this table here, and then this table here, whatever you did is not going to work. What we do is an evolution. You have to, you have to keep moving forward in what you do. You have to learn every day. You have to see things that happen. You have to, to have the ability to make change in the middle of something that you're doing. You have to make sure you're showing an effort towards the guests that you're trying to do everything you can to get to them. Even if you're busy, if you start showing things and, 
and, and I know the thing is, is when you're busy, don't make eye contact, don't make eye contact, don't make eye contact. That's incorrect. Make eye contact. Hey, I'll be right with you. Do apologize. I'm extremely busy. Boom, move on. And then everybody will start seeing what you're doing and then they're gonna start working with you instead of against things, against you. If you don't make eye contact and don't give them recognition, they're gonna be like, oh, well, he's ignoring me. But if you give them that, hey, I need a minute while you're moving, you know, even though they're trying to order, just, hey, I just need a minute, you know, and keep going, they're gonna start working with you. Hey, you're over there, I'm gonna need this also if you can get a chance, or you're just gonna keep flowing. So you have to give them the opportunity to help you. I mean, if you shut it down and keep your head down and you're moving this way and you're not looking at people, you're not catching what's going on. I mean, you might see, you know, you got your buddy over there that's drinking Johnny Walker Black. You just know he wants a Johnny Walker Black on the rocks. You have a tab for him, boom. You just go ahead as you're doing things and you're passing, you know, you're passing by the Johnny Walker Black. You just go ahead and you reach over, you grab it and you go ahead and you pour it while you're doing it and you just pass it to him. You don't make, you don't have to say anything to him. You don't have to do anything to him. You know you're gonna put it on his tab. So you go ahead and you make it and you hand it to him. Boom, he's out of the way. He's sitting back down. He's good to go. And you're still flowing with that guest that you're working with right now. You know, payments and, and tabs slow you down. You just have to be ready to move and kind of keep yourself going. Wherever your register is, if your register's facing them, you're doing that. If your register, is behind you and you have to turn your back to the guest. You gotta kinda go, hey guys, I'll be right with you. Boom, 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 turn back around and then just try to get to the to the guest that you saw come up first. Very, very difficult at first, but as you start learning your bar and where your seats are, you'll catch it in your peripheral of how to move forward. I mean, it's customer service. That's what we wanna give. We're selling them customer service. They can go anywhere and get a Johnny Walker Black on the rocks. Don't get me wrong. It's a great drink. Very, very simple. The gentleman that comes in every day and gets a Johnny Walker Black for you can go to the bar right next to you and get the same exact drink. I mean, there's no difficulty level in that. And I understand you might have craft cocktails and they can't get this craft cocktail here and that craft cocktail there. Craft cocktails are great, but it's not the main reason people are coming into your bar. They heard about your bar. Someone talks exciting about your bar. They say the drinks are great. So they're going in and they're testing you, not the drink. They wanna see what you're about. They wanna see how fast you meet them, how fast you can you can get them something to drink, something to move on, you know, whatever you're doing. If you give away, away chips or snacks or anything on the bar, you just wanna keep them moving. You wanna overwhelm them with customer service. If you can do that, you're gonna be very, very successful. If you give a great drink and you're fast, you'll be busy. Don't get me wrong, you'll be busy for a while, but then people will want to come in and they're going to want customer service. They're going to want to they're going to want to work with you and pick your brain and make you help them have a better time. So, customer service is is an aspect of every piece of your thing from the from the moment they step in of how you greet them, see them, pause to them, give them a finger and say hold on one second. You know, that whole beginning part sets the tone. You can change the tone as they go through the course, if it's bad or if it's good, you can have a great start and then totally turn sideways and, and be horrible. You can have a great start and it kind of just kind of putters down a little bit and then maybe have a good finish. Or you can have a great start, great middle, everything is going fantastic and then the ending, long check time to get them to check. Um, you know, you miss them or they didn't have water or, you know, it's just those little things that can ruin that last moment of the dining experience that they're gonna remember. So you just have to keep remembering to, to make eye contact, make it personal, make everybody feel that they're very important to you because they are very important to you. You don't might not think that the guy that's drinking Bud Light bottles here that only is giving you 50 cents is not important to you, but if he has five, six, seven of those a day, I mean, he's giving you three to $4 every day. I mean, it's the big picture that we look at. We don't look at the little picture because this person is only giving me 50 cents or this person's giving me 20. You know, it's it's the big picture that you have to look at. It's the whole, it's the whole part of it. You need the 50 centers, you need the $20. You need, you need a balance to make everything go great. So that's why we do what we do. So I want this guy here that's giving me the 20, 
to feel great and feel that I gave him great service and I was right there so that he gave me that great tip for a reason. And then this person over here that's giving me 50 cents, I want them to feel great because I want him to keep coming back you know, three, four beers every day or three days a week, you know, he's giving me his hard earned money. He might not, he might not have as much money as this person, but he's giving me his money for me getting him a drink. So always remember that you're helping, you're helping everybody feel comfortable. You want to introduce, you want to like try to get people to know each other. And then you just want to keep things moving. You know, you don't want to stop. You don't want to just hang out behind the bar. You don't want to lean. You don't want to talk to your other coworkers. Now, before the shift, after the shift, during the shift, talking about work parts of it is great. But if you're just standing back here going, hey, what are you doing later? You know, where are you going? Um, you're on stage. People are watching you. And if they're waiting for a drink or they don't have a drink or even though it's not your table, even though it's not your table, if they see if you see that they're waiting for something, help them out. Now you're like, oh, but that's not my table. That's not my section. You know, that's not, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, that could be your table. So a friend of mine said yesterday, you know, be careful on the toes you step on today because it might be the butt you're kissing tomorrow. You know, these things all go hand in hand. They might be sitting at a table today. They might be sitting at the bar tomorrow. Uh, you could go over there, meet and greet them, get them what they want, tell the server, and you're helping the server out, you're helping the guests out, they're gonna be like, wow, what great teamwork. The bartender helped me, you know, told my server what was going on and, and got me everything that I needed. And then they was like, wow. Well, now they just remember that the bartender went over, over and above to help them at their table. And then now they're like, hey, next time we go in, let's sit at the bar. So, and they're like, oh, wow, I met this great guy, Mark. You know, he was behind the bar. I was sitting at a table, I needed something. He was right there for me. He was keeping an eye on me and making sure everything was all right. Now that night you're not making anything. All you're doing is giving great customer service and you're gonna get rewarded 10 times over by them coming back or telling other friends that, hey, this bartender, Mark, man, he's hands down great. You gotta go see him. And you're gonna get that back, you know, in advance. You know, you're gonna get that back later in life, you know, from that guest. That guest is gonna, every guest has the ability to make you very busy to make you very happy. So it doesn't matter if it's this 50 cent or even this 50 cent or that's giving you 50 cents every time. He's a good guy, good girl, whatever it may be. He's gonna make you money if you treat him with respect and dignity. Cause I guarantee you everywhere he goes and he does that 50 cents for a beer, he gets the same thing. After the first one, after the second one, the third down, his service slows down and they start waiting on everybody else. That's why he bounces around. If you take care of him and you know, you know you're only getting 50 cents, he knows you're only getting 50 cents, but you keep taking care of him and you keep moving forward with him, he's gonna gain business for you. He's gonna tell his friends, he's gonna tell someone, someone he's gonna bring in is gonna surprise you and take really good care of you, always. So every person, you might not think this 50 cent person that's giving you 50, 50 cents on a 250 beer every time or 450 beer or 550 beer and he's giving you 50 cents every time and you're like man i can't believe this guy is just giving me 50 cents for this beer you can't think of it that way he is your opportunity your opportunity to make everything better so you take good care of him for 50 cents he knows it and then he's like wow i can go here this person is always going to take care of me so then all of a sudden he has 100 friends he starts telling his friends you start getting one or two people in they start telling their friends i'm like man john told me about this guy mark he's amazing i went in he was great and then next thing you know you're three four deep instead of just a couple people standing at your bar so you have to keep moving it forward every person that sits at your bar is your opportunity to go ahead and make yourself busy I know you're going to say, well, it depends on what you have or what kind of bar it is or what kind of food you sell. People can go get great food and great cocktails anywhere. They can go to a hole in the wall and get the best drink they have ever had in their life or a burger or a steak that just blows them away. They can go to a five star restaurant and get a great drink or great food that they just blows them away. You just never know, you know where it's going to come from. So when someone comes into your bar, you have an opportunity that people will always come back for great customer service. 
if the food is okay and the drinks are not bad, people will come back for that great customer service. Hey, thanks a lot, Mr. Miller. Really do appreciate you coming in. It was so awesome taking care of you. Boom, he's out the door and he's like, man, I can't wait to go back to see Mark again. I mean, I feel just feel so comfortable when I'm there. It's just really nice. So every opportunity at the bar from someone that's not tipping to someone that's giving you a small tip to all the way to giving you someone giving you a big tip. It's their opportunities. You have to keep your opportunities and your doors open so that you'll be able to go ahead and create creating business. This is your real estate. This is your real estate. When you're behind that bar, you control everything that goes on at your real estate. You know, if someone over here is causing trouble, you can fix that. If someone over here, you know, is, is just having a great time and, and someone over here doesn't want to have a great time, you can kind of go ahead and move that around a little bit. You can have everybody meet up and start greeting and, and, and having a great time and being loud and going going to town on everything they're doing, or you can just have everybody as individuals and you're just taking care of them. Every night is different. Every night's not gonna be the same. You're not gonna walk in every night and have 25 people, you know, five people drink, five people drink, five people drink. You're gonna come in one day and you're gonna have all 25 people just standing at you, looking at you going, man, this guy is horrible. You know, you have to take those and you have to turn them into great moments. You know, you have to keep building it up so when people see how busy you are, you still know them and you take care of them. And this person over here that's giving you nothing, uh, 50 cents or, or whatever it is, they're very important to you. They are. They are people that can bring in business. I understand you don't see that and you think that he's cheap or she's cheap. It's not It's not the case. They're, they work hard for their money. They have X amount of dollars. They choose to come spend it with you. If you choose not to take care of them, they're gonna go spend that little bit of money that they have available to spend with someone else. So you have to be careful what you wish for because if you keep wishing this guy to go or this girl to go or, or whatever it may be because it's her birthday or it's always a party or you know something about it, if you push them away enough, you're gonna be without business or you're, you're not gonna have a job there because your owners or the corporate companies are not going to stand for it. They want you to take care of everybody the same. And I understand this guy over here is throwing you big money. Um, I've had big money thrown at me and I take care of them just the same way as I take care of the people that don't tip me or tip me very little. Um, you don't discriminate. You just have to keep moving forward and treating everybody like they're special. So that is the key. Now I understand that a lot of people are going to go no way, I don't believe it, can't see it. Every time I wait on this person over here that doesn't tip or, or is 50 cents, you know, they're horrible. They do things that are different. You know, I get it, I get it. I've seen it too. I've had people that do that and, and you get nothing out of it. But on the other hand, I've seen that and I've gotten so much out of it that it, it was a hundred times better than I'd ever could think of it would be. You know, and then I've had this person over here that's always throwing me the, the 50 or the 100 turn into that evil person um, and then want the money back or, or whatever happens and or loses all all their funding and then they can't do that and then then it's it, then it becomes a very very ugly situation so you just have to be careful how you do things because if you start bending over backwards for this person you know this person always isn't gonna throw you big money you know there's something that's gonna you're, you're paying something to them for this and then it's gonna come back come back on you. This person over here that's giving you this, they just want a cold beer as fast as they can get it as soon as they come to the bar and they just want to give you their money. They usually almost have exact change. If it's 450, they throw you a five and they tell you to keep it. And then you're like, ah, 50 cents. 50 cents, 50 cents, 50 cents. It all adds up. It all adds up at the end of the night. It's just, you can't look at that individual tip as the whole, the whole person or the whole ship. You just can't look at that book and go, oh my God, this book is amazing. Oh my God, this book is horrible. Just by looking at it, you can't see that. You just can't. You have to go in and open the pages and start finding things that you like about this book and then things you like about this book, things you don't like about this book. When you read something like this, you're gonna like a lot of that stuff, but you're gonna read some of it and you're gonna like, ah, it doesn't really work. It doesn't think. You have to give everything a chance. And I understand you've tried things and didn't work or you've done different things and you've waited on someone that's kind of like this person and, and 
you're like, oh, I can't, you know, I can't go through that again. Not every person is the same. So you have to go ahead and help them, help them out. You help them, they help you. I mean, it's a give and take, it's a give and take, take relationship. It's always been that way by working behind the bar. You know, I've seen some of the best places with the best food and great cocktails not do very well because of their customer service and how long it takes to get a cocktail. You know, if you go to a place and they and you talk to someone and they go, hey, this place has fantastic cocktails, but when you go to the bar, you know, order two. You know, how many times have you been to a place like that or you've heard from someone telling you to go to a place that says, hey, it's a great place, great cocktails, but I have to order two because they're too busy to get you, you know, they you only get one cocktail because you know it takes like eight to ten minutes to get a cocktail. Or if you go to a place and you're like, ah, oh, it's not very busy, the cocktails aren't very good, but the customer service is good. So you know, he knows me, he's always on top of me. You know, they know what I want or what I'm looking for. So you know, you take that, you take that, and you and you push it forward. You know, you're creating a business. This is a business for you. You know, every day you have an opportunity to have one. To 500 people you know that you're going to influence to to keep going and you just keep pushing forward you want to do better every day you can with people that come in all the time i have regulars i love my regulars i have regulars that are absolutely over the top with money and i have regulars that are very very frugal with money now are they different people they are a little bit but at the end of the day they're the same they're standing at my bar they're creating an atmosphere for my bar because don't ask me why people don't want to sit at an empty bar. So if you have this person here drinking a beer, you have this person over here drinking Johnny Walker blue, then you have two people at your bar. They're helping you gain more people. People see two people, another two people will come up. Then people see four people or six people, then they'll have more people that come up. It's just how that works. So you keep pushing it to go ahead and you make everything just so comfortable for people that they just know that you're gonna take good care of them and everything's gonna be okay. Why am I telling you all this? Because this is what my channel is all about. No BS. So I know a lot of people are gonna be like, oh no, those people that say Tito's and vodka, you know, they're they're just crazy. They don't know what they're talking about. This 50 cent tipper is never gonna do anything for you. You know, that person that comes in all the time and doesn't tip you, you know, they're not going to do anything for you. You know, that's up to you. It's all in what you do. It's your bar. It's your real estate. You have the opportunity to influence these people's lives and change things for them. You know, so you can go ahead and some people want you to, to, to flip a bottle. Some people don't want you to flip a bottle. Some people just want you to make their drink and put it in front of them. You know, some people want to have a conversation with you. How's life? How are the kids? How's the job? You know, what's going on with you? Have you played golf? Have you played tennis? You know, how's everything with work? Some people, they come in, they don't want to be bothered. They put the flag up, they put the sign up. As soon as they sit down, you'll know the people that say they don't want to talk to you. You're going to have people that sit down and all they want is your attention. They want to tell you a story. They need to tell you about their life. They need to tell you what's going on right now. Now, why? Why would they just come to a bar and tell that bartender that? They need to get it off their chest. There's nothing you can do to change what's happening at their job or their daily lives. You know, you're just that person that's there to listen. You have to listen to your guests. They're going to come in. They're going to want to talk to you. They're going to tell you things. You're going to have guests that come in that ask you the same question every day. Are you working tomorrow? You know, what day is it? What time is it? Are you working tomorrow? What day is it? What time is it? You're going to have a guest ask you eight, nine times that same question over and over again. I mean, you can answer the question by answering the question. Yes, I'm working tomorrow. Hey, you know, today's the ninth, you know, or you can go, hey, you just asked me that question. You know, they don't know that they, you know, by telling them, Hey, you just told me that now you just made them feel uncomfortable or someone around them uncomfortable. You know, that's, they just, they're just struggling with that. And they didn't realize that they just asked you that question. You know, there's, you can go either way with it. You know, people have questions and they're like, Hey, I got a question for you about this item. You know, do you think you can change it? How you present yourself 
you know, tells that guest exactly what you're going to try to do to put into it. You know, hey, hey, Mark, can I get, uh, can I ask you a question? Can we, can we change something? Oh, change something on that, huh? Mm. You know, I can ask the chef or you were like, hey, they're like, hey, Mark, can I change this? Oh, hey, you can change this. Let me go ask because now you have knowledge. So if you go back to the chef and you're like, hey, chef, this, this guest doesn't like the polenta on this dish. Do you think we can get veggie or rice or pasta or whatever? And the chef might be like, no, nope, can't change that dish. It's just how it is. Now, you know the answer and you can just go back and it's how you deliver the answer. Or if the chef comes back and goes, hey, no problem. We can switch that out for you. You just gain knowledge. So someone that comes in and you see them, they don't eat the polenta every time. You could go, hey, you know, you can switch out that polenta for something else. Or you can find out just for fun. You can ask them. You're like, hey, you know, what uh, what other side dishes do you usually like to eat or stuff like that? And start getting knowledge. And then next time they come in and you know they don't eat the polenta every time. Next time they come in, when they order that same dish that they love, go ahead and switch the polenta out to asparagus that they love or broccoli or, or whatever it may be to the dish. And when it gets delivered, they're going to look at it and they're going to go, oh, did the dish change? And they're like, no. And then you go, no, I just noticed you never eat the polenta. So I went ahead and I got you a different side. I thought you might like that side. And they might tell you no or yes. And then you keep moving forward. If it's a yes, you just blew that person's mind. They're going to be like, wow, I come in. He listened to what I was saying and he went ahead and fixed it for me. And I didn't even have to ask them. And you see it every day. You see their plate. And the first time they had it, you ask them, oh, is the polenta OK? And you're like, oh, you're like, yeah, the polenta's fine. It's great but they didn't eat the polenta. Then the next time they come in, same thing, but you don't ask them about the polenta because you saw it the first time. And then by the third time, you're kind of getting it that they don't like the polenta. So then you go, hey, so what else do you think would go good with that dish? You know, I'm thinking about trying it, you know, or I want to come in and have dinner and I'm thinking about getting it, you know, uh, what else should I get with it? You know, what else do you think would be good with it? And then they'll start giving you answers. But you have to, you have to pick and choose things that take away. So you take a little in, you give a little. You take in a little, you give in a little. So you keep moving forward because you want to keep creating that atmosphere. Now, you can't create a wow moment every visit. Very, very difficult. But using their name and talking to them and knowing what they want. If they drink the same thing when they sit down at your bar, by the third visit, if you're not having that drink when you see them walk in the door, if you're not having that drink for them ready, when they sit down, you fail. Blows them away. You have their drink waiting for them when they sit down, or if you're very busy and you see them walk in and you make their drink and you hand it to them without them asking you or anything and everybody's looking at them like, who the heck is this guy or this lady? You're failing. You have to notice these things. You have to see these things. You have to make people feel special. That's what we do. We bring happiness. The bar, nothing but happiness back here. All this is happiness. These are all my tools that I have. I mean, something as simple as a fork and a knife, a steak knife. Something as easy as a steak knife or a certain sauce or a certain flavor or a certain vegetable or, you know, mango or papaya or, you know, anything that they love. If you have the ability to get it and you feel you can get it at a reasonable price that doesn't cost you much or the established much or whatever, you want to do that for the guests. Diet tonic, um, you know, skinny, a different agave. You know, little things, if you can get these things or change these things for them, you're moving forward. You're creating a loyal guest that's always going to talk highly about your establishment, always talk about you, and they're going to send you business. So instead of giving people a hard time, making fun of them, not wanting to wait on them, and then you thinking it's funny 
you're like, oh, watch this. He's just going to stand over there. And we, we know that he's waiting for a, a beer that you could do in 30 seconds. Open a beer, take his money, ring it in, and go and be done in 30 seconds to a minute. Instead of doing that, you, you make a spectacle of it and you try to, to, like, you're trying to prove a point to him. But all you're doing is you're pushing them away. You're pushing that, you're just taking that money and you're just throwing it away. You're taking that 50 cents. Think about it. Three days a week, he drinks three beers, he gives you a dollar fifty. You know, that's four fifty a week that he's giving you all the time. So every day you go in, you know that these days he's gonna be there, you're gonna make four fifty. Walking in the door, you're automatically making four fifty. It's not just fifty cents. I mean every week, I'm sorry, every week you're making, you know, four fifty it could be, because he's there for you, giving you that every time. So I mean that's his hard earned money. So you have to understand, take care of them. That's, that's as soon as you walk in the door, you're like, oh, I know I'm making 450 from this, this, this person this week. So if I can put a couple more people together, you know, then I'm up to $20. I know I'm gonna make $20. As soon as I walk in the door, you know, it's money. So, you know, you have to set yourself up. Instead of standing around and not having anybody at your bar and you're not making, you're making $10 and you're like, wow, this place sucks. You know, I can't make any money here. It's not the establishment. I mean, great bartenders have to find the great the great situation for them, you know. But a good bartender in the right situation is, is amazing. A good bartender in a bad situation is okay. But you have to find your mix and your niche, what works for you and how it goes. Because if you don't, you're gonna struggle, and then you're gonna make money for a while, but then you're not gonna make money. So you have to keep going in these times that we're having, you know, with everything, everybody's ready to go now and go out and everything like that. So we have the ability to create these times. I want to create a warm and memorable, you know, experience for a guest every time they come in. If I can do it. I have guests that talk about me today of how great I am. I have guests today that tell me how bad I am. It's just how it is. You have to find, listen, pick what you see and go go for it. You have to give it a shot. Now you have a guy that comes in and he drinks Johnny Walker Black on the rocks. Every day he's come in, you've waited on him for a year. It's always Johnny Walker Black. You might pour that drink for them and put it down in front of them and that might be the day that they're not drinking. You know, you've poured them 35 or 40 of them, you know, the last six months, every time he's come in and now he's walked in and you made it and now you have to either give that away, trash it or whatever like that and you're losing that money. But the long run of it is you don't want to create, not create that warm environment. Now, the next time they come in, you're not so fast to give them the drink. Maybe you make eye contact, you grab the bottle and you're like, hey, and then they'll give you a nod. Um, even if it's busy, you get, the, you get the little nod going and they'll let you know or he'll, he'll shake it. No, they're giving you the opportunity. You're going to have a drink for someone and they're not going to want it. It's not a bad thing. No problem. Just toss it. Toss it, uh, toss it, tell your manager what happened. You built up a loyal customer and you just thought that's what he's gonna drink every time. They're not gonna down you for it. They might give you a little bit of you know, resistance because you wasted a drink and they think you should wait it, but your ability to go ahead and get his drink in and out of your way within like 30 seconds to a minute gives you an opportunity to wait on someone else. So if your managers can't see why you're doing what you're doing to build up customers, then that's an issue, but that's something you can't control. So, but you want to go ahead and if you have regulars and you know what they drink every time, you want to have that ready for them before they sit down in their chair. You want to go ahead and you want to just hit a couple key points. You know, how's everything going? If they talk about work when they're around you, hit them with their job. If they don't talk about work and they talk about soccer or football or anything like that, you want to hit them with that. But you just have to catch in little bits and pieces. I'll never remember your name. I'll never remember your name. Let me just go ahead and say that now. But I know that you drink a Wave Runner every day that you come in. You know, I know you're gonna drink vodka and cranberry every time you sit down at my bar. I'm gonna remember that. Now, names are very important. I totally understand it. My brain just doesn't work that way. I remember cocktails over names. I rather remember not. I rather remember both of them. But my brain just doesn't work that way. So when you walk in, I see you. Roman Coke, Jack Daniels, uh, Johnny Walker Black, 
that's what my brain does as soon as I see someone. It doesn't go John, Mary, you know, Sandra. You know, it doesn't go that way. It goes right to the cocktail. Or it goes to, you know, his son plays soccer. Um, his, her daughter dances. You know, her daughter loves to surf. So these, that's how my brain works. So I hit him with all those first. And then as I get through the course or when, I, when I'm going through the shift, other people come in and then I'll meet them for the first time I'll introduce them first to them and then of course when they stand up they're like hey how you doing I'm the Smith and then they hit them with their name so it's one of those things where I get the drink down as fast as I can I want you to have I want you to have a cocktail in your hand you know within that first minute as soon as you sit down I want you to have a cocktail a glass of water something just something in front of you in your hand because this right here is so much more comfortable than this. Sitting there waiting for something to hold, touch, drink. You know, every guest, you know, if they're sitting there and they have a glass of water in front of them, they have something, the stress level just went down. So they just were like, you hand someone anything that they're gonna be able to drink. Some people drink a lot of water. So you put a water down in front of them, they're gonna reach for that water like right away take a sip and you'll just see the stress come out of their body. You have people that don't drink water at all, but the water in front of them that you just set down showed them that you know them, you're paying attention to them, and you're moving forward making their cocktail. So they're at ease until you can get them their cocktail, then they're relaxed. So once they have that cocktail and that first sip of that first cocktail, they're very relaxed. But these are tips and tricks that help you. If you put a glass of water in front of someone that doesn't drink water at all, every, I do this all the time, and you know they don't drink water, but you put that in front of them, you did something for them. You gave them something. They don't want it, totally understand it, but you did something for them. So automatically, their defenses drop a little bit. And then now they're just waiting for that first taste of that first cocktail. So you just kind of go ahead and you just keep moving forward and you just keep building on it. But you want to give somebody something in front of them so they know that you're, in, you're right there with them. You're, they're giving you information, a cocktail, you gave them the water, and then now you're working on their cocktail so you can go ahead and release their stress. Or just their, their regular soda or whatever they're drinking. It doesn't have to be alcohol, it can be anything. If they wanted a, a Coke, you know, if they wanted cranberry juice or pineapple juice, milk, you know, so if they wanted any of that, You'll see them, when they sit down, you finally get them their, their drink in front of them that they want. When they take a sip of it, if it's cranberry juice, Coke, milk, water, if that's what they want. As soon as you take that sip, they take that first sip, you see them totally relax. Then you just move forward, get their food order, get their, get their thing, see if they're eating, see what they're doing, see if they're going to a table, and then you just kind of move forward. But you have to let them get their guard down so by doing something and putting something in front of them, a napkin with a glass of water, you know, silverware, you know that they want to eat. Um, you're giving them keys or clues. You're giving them clues that you're paying attention to them. And at the end of the day, that person that sits down for you, that does, that wants to talk to you, doesn't want to talk to you, maybe it talks to you a little bit. They want clues that they know that you're there if they need you. So that person that doesn't talk at all. If you put, and you know they want to order food, they tell you right away, hey, I want, you know, I want a Cosmo, and I'll probably order food later. So you give them water, you make the Cosmo, and you go ahead and you have a menu, and you put down silverware, because you just took all the keys they gave you, and you gave them something in return. So now they have water, if they want water, they have their cocktail, and they have fork and silver, or silverware with them, so just in case they order food, they're ready to go, so they don't have to look around and go, how do I eat my food? I don't have a fork and knife. And then you just kind of keep moving forward. But you have to pay attention if you haven't got the food order yet to go ahead and come back and just keep pa passing by and making eye contact with them. Uh, eye contact is a, is a key to anything you do. I know the new thing is don't make eye contact, don't make eye contact, don't make eye contact. It's incorrect. Eye contact speaks volume. You can tell when someone looks at you, you can tell... They need something right away, not so much, you know, hey, okay, I get it. Give them the, give them the hey. 
you know, people understand that and people see that you're busy, but if you give them this and you're not busy and you're talking to a, another bartender or server, even if it's important about what's going on, if you're not busy and you're doing it, they don't, they don't know what you're doing. They don't think, they don't think that you're, they just think you're talking about last night. They don't think that it's important. They don't think it has anything to do with this table, that table, or not having a certain liquor for a certain guest that evening or a bottle of wine. They don't know what it's about, but to them, it's just two coworkers talking while they're waiting for something. So always try to clear that up first and say, hey, I gotta take care of this issue first, and then start talking to the server, letting them know that it's an issue, so that you're taking care of something. Because if you're just talking to a server and someone's waiting for a cocktail, they just think you're talking. They don't think that it's you know, anything at all. But these are some of the things that I wanna just push to people so my bar simplified is about helping people become better at customer service. I want to show you how to make drinks fast. If you can make a drink faster, you can get them out faster. The more drinks you can get out within that, you know, minute, minute and a half range, uh, the busier you'll be when it's busy. When you're busy and you can put out cocktails over, over and over and over again, get them rung up, get them going, get everybody going. Um, keep just working it around. I mean, you make a lot of money. You make the house a lot of money. If you're making the house a lot of money, they're very happy with you. So you have to keep uh, a great balance. So, you know, you keep everything flowing and you keep going and it's not a shame to ask for help. You know, hey, can you grab them water? Can you grab them tea for me? Because I, you know, I just took a 10 top. 10 top, who's up? Um, you know, these are little things that you need to start working with your coworkers. You know, it's not your table, not your section, not whatever. That guest doesn't care. That guest cares that he needs a spoon for his soup because he didn't get a spoon. Um, or he's been out of a beer for a few minutes because your other server, you know, is doing whatever. You know, could be doing something very important, could be doing nothing at all, sitting in the back looking at his phone, you know, just going away. That's your opportunity to sell yourself. So next time they come in, they go, hey, I they come in and they're like, hey, I want a table. And then they'll see you and they're like, hey, I want to be in that guy's section. You know, because you made an effort to them last time they were there, that was small to you, but huge to them. And they want to go ahead and they want to repay you uh, because you did some stuff for them and you didn't make anything from that. You didn't make any gratuity or anything like that. They, they don't think about the gratuity part, but they think, uh, like, hey, this guy helped me and, and he's not my server. So next time they see you or if they're there, they're going to be like, hey, when they're talking to the hostess, like, hey, see that guy right there? Uh, what's his name? And they're gonna be like, Mark. They're like, oh, hey, we wanna sit at Mark's section. Cause last time we were here, you know, he helped us out when we needed some stuff. So what happens today or tomorrow doesn't affect you today or tomorrow. It could affect you a couple weeks on or even a month or, or something along the lines of like, you didn't see someone for six months and then you see them again and, you, and you're just kind of like go through things. So you have to think about the big picture you can't think about the little moments. You can't think about the 50 centers, the non-tippers. You can't think of all that because you can't change your mood. You know, th those things Those things are trivial. I mean, you're gonna make money if you're good customer service. Now, you just, you just have to see that whole picture. You can't see that guy, 50 cent. Can't believe it. Oh my God, it's horrible. You know, or uh, the same person just reading that thing, reading it, reading it, reading it. And you know they're gonna order that Vodka of cranberry and they're just looking at it and they're and they're and you're waiting and, and they want you to stand there and wait for them and other people are coming up you know um, you just have to go with it you just have to go with it and if you can take someone else's order and not interfere with this person while they're doing whatever they're doing it's a ritual you know then do it but if you can't just go with it and just let everybody know hey I'm just waiting on on this and then just keep moving forward but you have to keep building those customer service relationships you have to keep making them guests feel special. The more and more you do this, the better people are gonna feel about coming to see you and going forward. So just remember, give great customer service. If you give great customer service, everything else will fall into place. That puzzle will become easier every day. If you can make a difference in someone, some guest in some way, with a small token of anything from going to, the, going to somewhere and finding an item that they need or want, most of the time, a business will help you take care of it as long as it's not too expensive, or you can even ask them. I ask my managers all the time to go ahead and get me things that guests want. I get a yes, I get a no, I get a maybe. I go, maybe we'll try later on. So just remember, there's no harm in to ask a question. 
you just never know, you know, the response. And you want to keep growing your guests, and you can keep doing things for your guests to make them feel special. So they're going to keep coming back, and they're they're your best advertisement. Drinks were great, food was amazing, the bartender took great care of us. I mean, wow, I was just totally blown away. You just never know who that person is or what's going on in their life to help them along. So that person that asks you every day, 10 times a day, are you working tomorrow? Just answer yes. You don't have to give them a hard time. You don't have to embarrass them. You know, keep moving. Just keep answering the question. It's going to sink in eventually. You know, that person that looks at the menu for 15 minutes knowing that they're just going to drink a vodka and cranberry, let them look at the menu for 15 minutes. You know, learn how you can work around that from them. You know, just keep learning and keep making everybody feel special from the no tippers to the 50 centers to the $20, the $100, the $500. You have to make everybody feel special and it'll all pay off in the long run. I know we like to make fun of our guests that do things that are not proper etiquette for a bar sometimes, but at the end of the day, they're there spending every bit of money that they worked hard for to give to you, to give to the establishment, to keep the establishment growing. So we need the doors to stay open. We need people to keep flushing to the bar and just keep making, just keep making things. So keep trying. And just remember when someone says, hey, you know, I don't know what I want. Make me something special. Ask two, two or three questions, flavors, fruit, uh, spirit, and then make them something. Make it, you're an artist. Make them a cocktail that you think they're gonna like. See how good you are. See if you can nail it's a challenge. When someone goes, hey, mm, I don't really know what I want. Just make me something. They're not trying to be difficult. They're challenging you to go ahead and see how well you know them to make that cocktail. So just remember, keep your mind going and go ahead and make everybody's day. Customer service is a win for everybody in the world. And don't ever give up on people that come into your bar all the time. Keep working with them. Keep trying to fix Fix a relationship, change it, make it better, make them bring in people all the time. So just keep going with it so that people feel happy about coming into your establishment and want to go back. When someone, so when I get a text message they're like, hey Mark, are you working? I'm ready to come in. I mean, it makes me feel so great. Or when someone comes in and like, hey, we're meeting Bob here. Bob was telling me, you know, how great this place was and how great you are and, and everything like that. You know, high expectations and and they're helping you along, they're helping you grow. You know, you get text messages, hey, I'm coming to town next week, you know, what's your schedule? Those are all compliments, you know, of things, you know, you get phone calls and stuff like that. These are all compliments of your customer service skills. Don't, don't give up on customer service. Customer service drives everything. If you can't make people feel happy and special, go find a different business. So, Marky Mark here. Thank you for letting me rant. Thank you for letting me be on my soapbox. These are very passionate to me. I see a lot of people not giving customer service. I see a lot of these great videos that are funny, that are picking on the customer on the other side. Just be careful with those because if you try to pull some of those things that they do in those videos, uh, it could cost you your job. So just remember, at the end of the day, those are skits to make you feel funny. Those are just live situations, but it's all in how you handle it. There's a right way, a wrong way, and a medium way in the middle. So, you know, pick the one where you want to go with it. So, thanks again for watching this. I know it was extremely long, but I just want to get this information out there to everybody. Tell you, my channel is here to make your life easier. So, if you have questions, if you have drinks that are very, very difficult, um, if you have a bar setup that's not very comfortable, and you want something, you can just write some comments in there. Send me a send me a message, and I'll help you fix it. That's what I do. I like to fix things to make it as easy as possible. I want to make everything simple from a cocktail that has 10, 10 different ingredients to a cocktail that has two uh, or just one. You want to make it as easy as possible to go ahead and you want to have everything set up and I can help out with that because that's what Bar Simplify is all about. We're here to help you better, better customer service. So please, please, please give great customer service. And I promise you, if you take the time to go ahead and make this person over here that's a non-tipper, the 50 cent tipper, or you make a conscious effort to give them a little bit better service, even though you're not getting anything or very little, you're gonna see a return on that. I will guarantee that. You'll see a return on that 
by making that person feel a little bit better about coming into your establishment, spending their money. Um, I've seen it before. I've seen the 50 cent on Timber at the end of the year or whatever, give me a card, you know, for gas or money or cash. Um, I've seen them bring it in a wedding party or, you know, a big business dinner and we made a lot of money. So you never know what what's going on in their life, who they know, what they know or how they know. But if you can if you can make them feel good about them giving you their money that they work really, really hard for. And then it's going to return. It's going to return an investment. for you. I promise you that. So that's your goal for good customer service to start with that one. I mean, the person over here giving you big money, make sure you take care of them also. But you want to make sure that this person feels special also because you'd like to have that all the time. And then you'll see that it'll make a difference. And you'll get return on it. You're going to see a return. I promise you. If you keep giving them a hard time, giving them slow service, you know, complain about oh, 50 cents again, you know, they get all that. They see the tone. They get that. They understand. And then eventually they're going to go somewhere else and then you're not going to have that. But you can keep them. I want them. So if you don't want them, send them to Florida. I'll take them because I've built clientele from that to from the 50 centers that it wasn't very busy and all we had were those 50 centers coming in to then oh my god we're getting dollars and dollars and fives and tens making 20 50s and hundreds you know through the crowd so you have the ability to turn that it's not going to happen overnight or that moment it could take a long period of time but you have the ability to fix that so remember that your control of your real estate so build it build it build it build it and make it great and i want everybody to say man that was just that was just such great service you know or you sit down or if they're you know they walk in and you're slammed and there was like three buddies and you hand their, their cocktail you know while you're busy i mean it makes them feel great and you just earned you just earned give and take thing from them they they're gonna repay you later on you'll see that it'll happen so it could be from bringing in a big party to have you doing a party at their house to anything but there's always gonna be something that's gonna you're gonna gain from that so just remember that and keep pushing for fantastic customer service that's all I can tell you I love customer service I try to make someone's day every day so just remember that you appreciate it to the next episode which is gonna be the porn star martini I'm going to have that up for us here shortly. I'm going to get the uh, sex on the beach, the, the breakdown of it. Uh, I just got a little bit behind and I wanted to get this video out because I was getting some questions about what I am, what I'm trying to do, why I'm trying to do what I'm doing. So I just want to put it out there. If you watch this video to the end, I really do appreciate it. Like and subscribe, pass this on to your other bartenders. You know, hopefully it makes sense to them and, and it may gain something from it because our, our breed, the bartender, uh, is changing and some of it is great some of it is not so good and some of it is really really bad so just remember keep pouring keep a smile and try to make someone's day every day do appreciate it thanks a lot